What's up, everyone? It's Kyle Christensen from K7 Leadership and MSP Geek, and we are here for another Rockstar Vendor Spotlight for MSP GeekCon 2023. What's a Vendor Spotlight, you ask? Well, it's where we shine the light on some of our most badass vendors in the MSP Geek community and get to know them a little bit better. We're going to dig deep into their history and find out how they got involved in the channel, and most importantly, learn from their expertise on how we can level up as a community. And if that's not enough, we're going to have a dope Q&A session to really dive deep and figure out how we can all work together to make our MSPs even better. Now, if you're not familiar with MSP GeekCon by now, well, where have you been? You've been living under a rock, a pineapple, your uncle's war prep bunker. Come on, guys. You've seen the post. MSP GeekCon is the conference for technical for pe professionals at IT services firms created by our community. And you know what? Not only that is it's for our community, and I am honored to be the one asking the questions today. For guys of you that don't know me, my name is Kyle Christensen. I've been a proud MSP Geek member since day one. I've also founded some pretty sweet vendors in this space, but these days I'm all about mentoring and training MSP owners, operators, technicians to break down the barriers that hold us back from reaching our full potential. Been doing this for over 20 years, guys, so trust me, I know a thing or two about the MSP space, but you know, enough about me. Let's talk about our guest today, and I swear he's a lot cooler than I am. Uh, so joining us today is a man, he's the myth, he's the legend who's been in the industry for over a decade, leading global service teams at some of the largest MSPs in the world. He's a product guru who's passionate about aligning technology with the needs of the community, and he's currently servicing, serving, wow, can't talk today, as the chief product officer for Vonahai Security. That's right, I'm talking none other than our guy, Kai Tran. How are you doing today, man? Hey, hey, what's up, Kyle? Thanks for having me on. And I disagree. You are definitely the cooler one. I mean, look at all the guitars. Like, check out that room. Definitely incredible. You know, at this point, it's just it's marketing art, man. They don't let me out of this room. So, you know, the handcuff to the desk has gotten real. I mean, but it looks beautiful. At least it's in a great space. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it, man. So, you know, everyone, I buckle up, right? There's some cool things that Vana High has been doing in our space. And, you know, first and foremost, Kai, congrats on the acquisition. Awesome. No, thank you. It's, it was huge news, right? Um, we were, we're, we're amped. We're excited to be moving forward with, with the journey. So, you know, it, it's, it's funny, right? Cause there's highs, there's lows, and, but at the end of the day, it's all for probably making the product better, right? As a SaaS provider, as a software provider, right? We always have features and roadmaps and especially in cybersecurity, there's going to be things in our pipeline that we don't even know what features we're going to have to build, right? Yep. No, exactly. And that's, that's actually kind of why we decided to move forward with this path, right? The whole team is here. We're all still on board and we're committed to, to building, you know, this, this badass product that we've brought to the market. And now, you know, with, with more resources, we're going to be able to develop, innovate a lot faster than ever before. And to kind of hit on that point a little bit further, you know, we're, we listen to our community. Like we work very closely with our partners, with our MSPs, and that's how we've built a lot of the features and uh, pretty much most of the stuff you see the platform today was all feedback from our partners. Man, and, and, and you know, that's the whole thing, right? Is when we're part of a community, there's going to be feedback, there's going to be bumps in the road because we're all in a very young industry, right? At the end of the day, the IT services firm is only about 15 years old. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. And I think, you know, especially with like the SMB space finally starting to to become more tech focused, we're starting to see that that growth uh, drive drive a lot of that demand there. Yeah. I mean, so much so, right? The compliance is coming down the road, right? The government's getting involved. And if we think of some of our counterparts, like in finance and HR, right? Like they've had 50, 60 years to mature. So yep. it's kind of fun to see us finally in that mode and, and kind of switching gears a little bit, man. I, I heard a little story or I heard something about your past a little bit. Uh, I heard you uh -oh. what your AOL screen name was. Oh, I heard man. you were known as the pudgy Asian. <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah. That was, I don't know. I was a kid. I was a little pudgy. I was Asian. It kind of just made sense. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> one of those two things, just one of those obvious. Well, now you know me in two words. Yes. Oh man. I love it. I, I, if you know, it just being transparent, you know, I have to say mine. Mine was master guitarist. I couldn't have guessed considering <laughs> everything we're it's seeing It's so today. dorky and I'm so like embarrassed by saying it out loud because I think I had been playing for like two years and I couldn't even play a song if I had tried. But right, that was the day. That was the free day, right? You could pick whatever you wanted. 
Yeah, you know, you can do whatever you want. Actually, and it's crazy because I don't, I don't know if if uh, if AOL chat even exists anymore. But those were the times. Those were the times, man. And, and speaking of, you know, interesting names, tell me, tell me about Vonahai. Tell me how it kind of came up. Tell me about like really for those that are on the uh, watching that just aren't familiar with your product. Like, tell me a little bit about you guys. Yeah, yeah. So Vonahai Security, right? It was founded by Alton Johnson. Um, he's got over a decade of a pen testing and him and I, we actually go way back. Right. We, and it was really cool and how we got started. You know, we, we both got started in traditional help desk, right? Help desk and kind of just moved up the stack. Now took two very different paths, right? Alton went down hardcore on the security side. I went down hardcore on the systems engineering side. Um, so that's kind of what led me to end up like leading a lot of like the world's biggest MSPs. And we're talking like multi-billion dollar industries here. They're huge. Um, Alton went down the path where he became like an OSCP and OSCE, uh, working for some of the largest pen test firms like in the world as well. Now, Von High was created back in 2018, and the name itself means to pull from fire, which is pretty fitting considering what we offer, right? Pen, pen testing through a SaaS platform. So we basically, we give MSPs and even internal IT teams the ability to run network pen testing on their own as frequently as they need. Um, that way they can better safeguard their 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 environments and also their clients as well. So, you know, as someone that's familiar with pen testing, having ran an MSSP myself, I know that there's a lot of convolution in even just the word pen test, right? We have white box, we've got black box, there, there's internal stuff, there's social engineering. Tell, yep. I think because we're knowing with MSP GeekCon in that we are trying to appeal to all levels of technical professionals, right? Down to the guy that's only been working for three to six months. What's the, mm -hmm. you know, give me your definition of the pen testing that Vonahai is trying to bring. And if you want to get a little nerdy with us, man, feel free. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and I, I agree with you 100%, right? I think there's a lot of confusion and maybe even misuse of, of that term in the space because it can mean a lot of things. So we're very clear and we try to be very, actually, don't even try. We're very transparent with, with our approach. And that is, you know, the platform itself focuses on network pen testing. So external pen tests, internal pen tests, going after uh, anything on, on the TCP IP stack, basically. If it has an IP address and it uses open ports, we're going to try and, uh, and, and attack it, essentially. Um, using the very same methodologies that a traditional network pen tester would use on a, on a manual pen test gig. We're just doing it, a lot of it through code now. Um, so because of that, we're able to drive down the costs uh, increase the frequency which you can provide that service, and then also bait it into a SaaS platform that's now multi-tenant and white, la white label capable for our MS MSP partners. If you're an internal IT team, it's really just a good way for you to validate security controls and also do, again, more frequent pen testing. So in that regard, you know, a, a lot of times I think people just kind of blanket it, right? Pen testing should mean social engineering, phishing, um, maybe in some physical, some physical breach points, uh, this maybe some web app stuff, right? So from a from a higher, I guess a higher like overview, sure, pen testing could include all that, but that's more of like a red team assessment, and that's why again our messaging is we do network pen testing. If you need web app pen testing or phishing or social engineering, um, we can do that through red team services until we find a way to automate that, of course. So. I'm going to challenge you a little bit more on this one because, right, you're throwing yeah. out red team, right? There's blue team. There's all there. There's left of boom, right of boom. There's all these terminologies that are happening mm -hmm. out there. I want you to talk to me like I am three months into my tier one help desk role. Explain to me what the pen testing you are doing, and right, what is the actual process and what is the outcome you're looking for? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So back when I led MSPs, even ran MSPs, right? especially on the side, because I, I did a lot of customer facing stuff and we sold a lot of security, advanced security packages, stuff like that. And sometimes, you know, customers won't listen to, to what we recommend. I, I think everyone can, can understand that. And so I there's no always idea that what fear. you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> right. Why won't you do what I asked you to do? So I, I feel like a lot of us, right. And then, and then we're even the, even our customers, they, they, they see it all the time, you know, so-and-so was breach, so-and-so was breach, uh, supply chain attack, et cetera. They all know it's there, but obviously a lot of these things cost money. And so they don't listen. And then there's always that fear in the back of your head, like what's going to happen? You know, when am I going to get, when, when is it going to be one of my customers? What's going to happen whenever someone gets breached, right? So 
you're only a few months in to your tier one job. What, what, what are we doing and why should you do it? Right. Instead of waiting for that win, right. Bring it in house. Now we're, we're emulating the same attack methods of, of, of a malicious hacker so that you can get in front of that, of that situation. Basically it's very much a left of boom type of offering here. Instead of waiting for a right of boom to happen, let me see what would happen in a controlled environment. If I were to get hacked today. How much can they get away with? How much exploitability exists in my environment? Where are my weak spots, All right? And in, in a very actionable way, a Vuln scan will just tell you, you know, like here's a database of signatures and then it just spits out and saying, yeah, these are all the things that could be potentially vulnerable. Um, some of those, only, most of those don't even have publicly available exploits. On the pen test side, we are proving to you like, hey, I was able to basically gain access to this user account pivot from there and get domain ad, domain admin from here, you know, ran, uh, ran a script and basically found all these sensitive files. This is what you need to do to protect that and fix that from ever happening at all. So again, very, very actionable, very direct. So, right. Essentially we're, the technology works, right. As an IT professional, that's what we care about, right. Is the client calls in, they can't work and we find a way to get them to work. Where on the other side of the fence, right. Just because it works doesn't mean it's set up properly doesn't mean it's exactly. set up to a place to where it couldn't be, right? We say the word exploited, but it could be as simple as, hey, a file share is open that doesn't have any level of access and I can get the CFO's files, right? But it was easier for me to get the CFO access to their files by just giving rights to everyone, right? I mean, I remember <laughs> yep. back in the day, right? You would get, you would be messing with like a, a map drive problem and you'd go, fuck it. I'm just going to make it the rights for everyone, right? Like that, that's yeah. literally what we used to do back in like the late 2000s when we ran I into a problem, it. right? And, and, there, and those cases are everywhere, right? So as an MSP Tech One, right, you guys may not have done that, but the IT company previously that was managing that client may have done that. And for a lot of us, right, we don't know that those exploits are out there because it just works. And we do all of our onboarding and our due diligence that... We don't go and check the file permissions on everything. That that would be like in the moment, right? Especially from a help desk perspective, that would be asinine. There's not enough hours in the day to go check all that. But you're exactly right. right. Sometimes you do a vulnerability scan and you go, oh, there's 400,000. <laughs> Let's just start one by one. Yep. <laughs> so I, I remember when we first met and what's funny, Kai, is this, this poker chip you gave me, I don't know if people can see it, a couple years ago, like what was this right a boom um it sits on my desk because it's my fidget toy but i remember when we were talking you had told me about this like you've hacked 3500 companies now yeah yeah it's uh it's actually a pretty cool uh milestone for us so to to date right now we've done almost uh about fourteen thousand five hundred assessments um and that's a mixture of external and internal pen tests right but that's all through through our partners, right? Through through our MSP channel, and they represent about um, almost four thousand companies now. So the numbers changed because we've been growing quite a bit. But yeah, at the time we published information, it was about thirty five hundred companies that we ethically hacked uh, for a company that's only been around for about, or I'm sorry, for a platform that's only been around for about three years. Damn. Uh that's really kind of keeping the ball moving, man. Like, what are some of those, what are the kind of, I don't know if you have data or if there's anything you can share, like what the lessons you guys have learned through those. Um, but I'm sure there's got to be some insight in that. There is. It's, it's actually incredible, right? So we're, we have, we're across multiple verticals. Um, so we've seen everything from manufacturing to finance, healthcare, you know, auto dealerships. I mean, literally every industry we're, we're in there somewhere. And some of the most common things we see, it's kind of crazy, but to, to your point, right? Misconfigurations and also just people not doing anything about IPv6. I think IPv6 is the, the most common issue I see almost on every single assessment that we've done. And that's, and that's basically, you know, a lot of it's because, you know, people are like, well, I'm using IPv4. Why do I care about IPv6? But that, that's leaving a gigantic open door uh, with, with a lot of sophisticated attacks that can be performed to gain access. Um, we actually have a white paper on our website, free. It's not gated. You don't have to input any information. Let me just go download it. Uh, basically top 10 critical findings that we've discovered from ethically hacking over 3,500 companies. Dang. 
Yeah, it, you know, it's funny. I think back to, again, my early MSP days. We're talking like 2011, 2012, when the TLS stuff started happening, right? And 1.0 starting to get expired. Um, mm -hmm. Having to go in, and, and I'm not proud to say in this, but I'm going to say it, right? We had to re-enable TLS 1.0. And we had to do it because they had a copy machine that was worth $50,000, right? $60,000 that only worked on that protocol. Yep. But right at the, in those moments, right, especially in the early days, right, the client isn't going to go buy a new copy machine, right? They're going, dude, just enable it. But there are those things where I think back to going, well, is it still enabled, right? Like at this point, they've probably replaced it, but did their new IT company ever go back and see those things? Because just like IPv6, right, TLS 1.0 was even easier to kind of get around in those instances. Uh, yeah. I remember a big breach. I don't remember if it was like a big manufacturing, but uh, they were getting through those security cameras because they were all just forward port 80. Same thing with SMB1. And I, I'm sure I'm sure a lot of our MSP viewers could probably, you know, uh, empathize with this here, but if you don't manage or if they have a copier vendor, it's, it's pretty common for them just to come drop off this machine, enable all services, sometimes ask for credentials to do scan the file to work. And uh, now you got a you got a pretty exploitable d the machine right there. And, you know, it's it's an interesting topic, too, because that's where you start getting into the shadow IT stuff. Right. And I yeah. know it's I don't know. I'm not a huge fan of the, the, the name. I know it's a catchy name, but to me, right, <laughs> a lot of times it's I'm just working at a company and my boss is telling me I got to get shit done. And my IT company is telling me I can't do this, but I still have a deadline or I get fired. Right. I'm a sales guy. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an AR clerk. I'm someone with a high stress, repetitive position. I'm going to find a way to do it. Yep. Yeah. And sometimes we as IT, we don't know about these things. No, that's true. That's very true. Well, you know, and I, I think. And I, I actually I agree. The, the term is is a uh, I guess designed to have a little bit of a fear mongering effect to it. Also, sound badass, right? But but I think in those situations, right? Because we we used to get those clients, right? And but that opens there's actually a lot of opportunity there for you as MSP to really shine by by basically having a better conversation and gaining that trust. And then now instead of them just slapping crap on the network, it's going to cause downstream issues for everyone involved. You know, they if they start looking at you as more of a partner versus just the IT guy, now they're like, hey, listen, you've always approached all of my problems from a business perspective. I'm trying to do this. Show me the best way to do it versus them just saying, ah, you're just a guy that I call to run the cables. And now I'm just going to slap stuff on the network and good luck. Yeah. It, exactly. Right. And I think that even speaks to why pen testing where it, back in the day, right? I remember I was charging people fifteen to twenty thousand dollars for a pen test. Like we're, we're talking like high revenue generating items because it was quite a bit of work, right? Especially when you get into um, really trying to do IPs and really trying to figure out the ports. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you're doing those larger pen tests right back in the day, it was a tough sell, right? To tell the client, hey, I know your network works perfectly, but I got to make sure your employees aren't abusing it. Yep. Yeah. But now, right, with a product like Vonahai, right, being able to have that leverage of going well, you know, now it's somewhat affordable, right? It, it can be an expensable operationally based item in your environment to make sure that marketing didn't just go buy 40 tools and install them on their machines and not even looking at where they came from. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking at a lot of those AI companies right now to where they're all pushing them out real quick and people are just downloading whatever they see. Yep. Yep. Yeah. It's kind of a, a big, uh, a fad almost, but you know, and, and, AI is pretty cool, but that's kind of part of our totally. mission, right? At, at Vonahai, our mission was, uh, how do we get more pen testing in the hands of everyone, right? And let's let's find a way to drive down the cost and also be able to scale it. Because to your point, right, back whenever you were doing it, 15, 20 grand, that was pretty typical. And that's because it was human intensive. It, it cost, it took a lot of time and the labor is expensive, you know, good, good pen testers are, are not easy to find. Yeah, if, if for those MSP owners that are watching back in the day, you had to have a CISSP, a guy with an ethical hacking certificate. And in 2013, 2014, I remember these were $150,000, $160,000 a year. Now, granted, I was in California, so right, I did have a higher salary base. But at the end of the day, right, you had to sell these at 15 to 20K just to break reasonable margins in these security offerings. Yep. Now, you know, I know also there's some controversy with automated pen testing, and I know I've we've had these discussions off camera, and, and I, I kind of want to understand a little bit, 
and I think it would be helpful to our viewers. How, how have you guys kind of strayed away from the controversial side of it and really turned it into an efficiency and productivity side? Yeah, no, absolutely. So we, we kind of hit on this, right? And I'm going to answer this question a little differently. Um, if you've played around with chat GPT, it, it is insanely cool technology. The fact that that exists should not even bring about the questioning of how can a network pen test be automated? Like, are you serious? Like you got stuff, something that's generating images and, and understanding context on the fly. So what we're doing, relatively speaking, it's not nearly as complicated. Um, it is complicated. Don't get me wrong, but it's not nearly as complicated. So that's, that's kind of been my perspective lately, right? Is I, everything is impossible until it's done. And we've done it at Vonahai. It, it is truly a, a, an automated network pen test. I think we used, we started to shy away from that term just because in the space there was a lot of controversy, but now we're kind of embracing it. Like, listen, you might not, you might not like that. I'm saying that come talk to me about it and let's, let's, let's figure this out together. Right. Um, at, at least it's got the conversation started and I, let me show you why we call it network, an automated network pen test. And the other thing too, is I get it. There are some solutions out there that say they're an automated pen test. And then you, you look at who built it and then you're like, okay, fine. I, I give them that. Right. Because the person who built it was never a pen tester. Our entire platform was built by hackers. Like they were built, it was built by people who've been doing pen testing for the majority of their life. Um, like that, that's all they've been doing. And then, you know, to, for, to have someone say, well, it's not an automated network pen test. I'm like, I'm sorry, but the team that built it, who are all hackers says otherwise. So that's, that's my take on it. No. Yeah. It, it's again, and we understand, right. There is a controversial side to it. There is, uh, there, there's always that level two to where, you know, of course doing it hand in pen, right. And just, you know, uh, as what my buddy Wes would say, hand jamming some of these things will get you a little bit better quality, right? Us as MSPs have to understand that there's also a margin and efficiency aspect to a lot of this to where if we can automate this, right, that does allow us to do this more at scale, right? This allows us to make it more available for more of our clients. And I think that segues nicely into how we can integrate this effectively in our IT systems and our procedures. Like wh what is your thoughts on how an MSP should really start to integrate this to their client experience? Yeah. So right now, right now where we're seeing a lot of the demand is like to, to what I think you mentioned earlier, cyber insurance and compliance requirements and SMBs, and MSPs are starting to see that, you know, get pushed towards them a lot more frequently now. Um, the other thing though, our goal, right? Cause I, all MSPs, you, you all do onboarding, right? Whenever you bring on a new client, you're doing onboarding. And we all know that if the onboarding goes smooth, that that means your, your, your ticket counts, um, after that, it's going to be a lot less, right? You're trying to reduce that noise, right? From, from onboarding that new client. So we're hoping that pen testing becomes the new standard, right? Not just a Vuln scan. So pretty much every new onboarding, someone gets a pen test right off the bat. And that way, you're immediately you're seeing where the security issues are. You're seeing where all your noise generators are, and now you can have really good conversations with that client. But listen, this is what this is why you need our advanced security stack. This is why we're doing pen testing every year at the minimum. Um, should almost be like quarterly or at least biannually. And then this is why you need to do these projects right right off the bat because it's going to reduce all these security risks and again make your business run a lot more efficiently. Now, and I 100% agree, right? It's, it's, it's definitely going into that due diligence and that proper, you know, client management to just make them aware, right? Now, for smaller MSPs, right, this can be tough, right? Especially when you are that sub $2 million MSP, right? You're in that one to 15 employee range, right? It, it can be tough, right? Like, especially because you may not have the time, treasure, or talent to really have just the wherewithal to go into these strategies. And, you know, I think this is why having a partner like Vana High is so important because, you know, and speaking especially to you guys, your, your tier one and tier two engineers that may be watching, right? It takes time for us to be, just have a comprehension of what some of this stuff entails. And beyond just the comprehension, being able to put it into practice and then being able to put it into practice to where your MSP will make money to support the ecosystem to scale it. So there's so many vault, like, right, there's so many layers and there's so many balls that we have to juggle. 
Um, I guess really for those tier one and tier two guys where they're starting to really concentrate on security or they're trying to stay up to date, uh, do you have any recommendations on where you think they could probably start? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, and I'll say this right off the bat too, right? Our, our goal here was never to replace uh, security experts or even pen testers. Um, our, our solution was built to basically allow and free up time for security experts and, you know, aspiring security experts to focus more on the deeper level detail stuff, right? To stay ahead of just the common stuff and basically be able to really hone in on the real issues here. Um, spending your days, you know, doing the same stuff over and over again, that doesn't make any sense. Whatever can be automated should be automated. And that's how we're going to keep elevating each other uh, to the next tier, right? So if you're tier one, tier two, and you're trying to get, you know, you're trying to be, become a pen tester, right? Using our solution, it does help because we're going to give you like so much information on, on the hacker mindset, if you will. All of our technical reports, it gives you step-by-step -step on everything we did. Um, so you can kind of learn like, hey, from a pen tester perspective, this is this is the movements that were made. This is how things were done, right? So it's almost like a playbook. Um, now, if you're really getting serious into it, uh, I highly recommend looking into the OSCP and then eventually the OSCE. I like it, man. I like it. And I know people like our boy Wes uh, Spencer, right, with um, Cyber, Cyber Empath, right? He's starting to really help out that education and really, it's just being curious, right? A lot of this stuff is unknown, right? We're all kind of learning at the same time as well. Um, and you can kind of see a lot of that out there. Uh, but you guys are going to be at MSP GeekCon, right? What can we expect from you guys? Yeah, absolutely. We're going to have a booth there. Definitely come check us out. Alton, our founder, is going to be uh, doing a panel session there as well. Um, and I think really that one's going to be just focused on how to how to move to the next layer in your um, – or to the next tier in your, in your career. Um, but – Again, we're going to have some awesome swag. We'd love to just talk to anyone that's, that's, that wants to talk to us about pen testing, security in general, or even just come grab a cool shirt from us. I love it, man. I love it. Well, hey, man, it's been great having you on. And uh, we look forward to seeing you there at uh, MSP GeekCon. Awesome. Likewise, Kyle, thank you so much. Uh, MSP Geek community, you guys have been awesome as well. Thank you so much. So, guys, that's a wrap for today's Vendor Spotlight with Kai from Vanahai. I hope you all enjoyed learning more about the journey and the amazing solutions that his company has to offer. And honestly, just a really cool topic about, you know, some of the things we struggle with as technicians and owners of MSPs. Uh, as always, we want to thank the MSP Geek community for joining us and being a part of this conversation. Your input and feedback are invaluable to the growth and success of our industry. If you have any additional questions or you want to learn more about Vana High, be sure to check out our website and connect with Kai and Alton uh, while they're there. They're both amazingly intelligent guys. And finally, a big shout out to MSP Geek for creating this amazing platform for us to have these conversations Wow, conversations and share our experiences and knowledge. We can't wait to see what the future holds and see you guys next in the next couple of weeks. Other than that, I've been Kyle Christensen. You guys have a great rest of your week. This has been a broadcast of the MSP Media Network.